me just give you a little behind the curtain on podcasts if you haven't ever done one before. You have to actually be recording in order for the podcast to work. I found found out just a second ago, which you're seeing me look now to see that things are as they ought to be, that I wasn't. I wanted to talk today about the idea of our children on the daily summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Curtin. Today is Saturday, the 30th of April, that last day of April of 2022. Welcome to everyone who's here on Rumble, on the podcast, on YouTube, on BitChute, on CloudHub, on my Facebook page. That would be the Kurt's Religion and Politics page on Facebook, on Kurt's Religion and Politics.locals.com, on MindsMINDS.com, on the Kurt's Religion and Politics group primarily there, on Parlor, on Gab, on Twitter or wherever else you might be finding me today. And again, the subject is going to be our children. And I want to start by saying something that is just true. And it is that there are a lot of people out there who maybe are not great parents. There may be not. Nonetheless, they are the parents or guardians of their children. Um, And I want to go ahead and go through my notes to give you some idea sort of where I stand on a lot of this today. One of the realities of American life early on in the existence of the country is that many people were sufficiently isolated from others to make it necessary for them to do all of the care of their children by themselves, often with little to no outside help. In more recent times, folks have gotten used to the idea of having others around to help them with that task. To be fair, As things work out these days, sadly, it's greatly more necessary for that to be the case. It's a certain thing that children in the care of others are subject to the rules, regulations, and requirements of uh, those others place upon them so long as they're not acting outside of what is reasonable. What's not so sure, though, is that those individuals are somehow superior in their ethics, morals, intelligence, or much of anything else Uh, to the parents of those children. Being uh, totally reasonable, there are a lot of guardians of children who, sadly, you could argue, aren't really up to that task. For me, though I wasn't anything like the parent I should have been for my older children, it was very obvious to me it was time to step up and do what needed done. Maybe more importantly, even as a younger person, I had a set of values I desired to instill in my children. And I grant you, not everybody's values are great. But the point is, when people have children, that's one of the things I think that they can reasonably expect to do with those children. I'm not trying to say teachers, daycare workers, and others should have no part in that process. In the end, though, you're my child's teacher, for example, from between one and five years of age, or five years of time as a rule, not age, but time. After that, you send them on their way while I must still continue to work with them and live with them. The same sort of thing is true for daycares, except more so. For the first five years of life, maybe six in some cases, the child might spend the majority of his or her day in such a facility. At the end of the day, though, the parent or other guardian uh, comes and picks that child up and spends the rest of it often with them. So again, here in Arkansas, I can tell you that you can't have a kid in daycare for more than 10 hours before the local Department of Health and Human Services decides that you're abusing your child. Wrong or right, that's what they do. Okay, and that means 14 hours of the day have to be accounted for. Maybe they go to grandma and grandpa's house, but the point is largely it is not the daycare that spends the majority of the time with that child, even if they spend the whole 10 hours with the child. Uh, Then at five or so, the child starts school and typically spends even less time with anyone other than parents. And again, if the guardian of a child moves or the kid ages out of some particular program, school or whatever, they continue with the person acting as in the stead of parent or just plain parent, right? Being just plain a parent, while old teachers, daycare workers and others fall by the proverbial wayside. If for no other reason, it should be assumed the person tasked with instilling values into those children, the persons, are parents or guardians, not teachers and so forth. The truth is, many of those people who look after my child in the course of a workday either have no children or have no more experience than I do as a parent. 
maybe even more significant is the fact that I consider my moral framework for existence to be superior to any other that I know. If it wasn't, I'd adopt the one that was. It's pretty simple, really. Lots of the time, people who work with children aren't nearly so stringent in their standards or principles. Again, can they express their opinion on how life should be lived and others treated and so forth? Well, yes, but that's not, not why my children, excuse me, go to the various places they work where the, those folks, the folks in question work. For daycares, it's to provide my child a safe place to be while I earn the money that pays their house for their house, food, clothes, and other necess necessities and, if possible, luxuries. For teachers, it's to get them into a standardized curriculum for things like math, reading, writing, and others that will be important life skills. And I want to put an emphasis on it that will be important life skills. That's really significant. Do the children socialize in such places? Sure, but that's not the primary reason they're there. That's a secondary reason. I hope this clarifies the problem many have with teachers daycare workers and the like. Let's discuss this a little more and that's the end of my notes. I understand that there are parents out there who will not give children what they need to make them reasonable members of society. I get that. But I also recognize that a woman gave birth to that child to whom you are speaking when you work in a school or a daycare, and that that woman and the woman, the man with whom she finds herself, hopefully, have a responsibility for the upbringing of that child. If your school got nuked t tomorrow and they survived, they would still be responsible to bring that child up. If their house got nuked, the school would have no such responsibility. Let's remember that. Same for daycares. If the daycare got nuked, the parents would find another daycare. It got closed down. Whatever. Whatever it happens to be. If the parents got killed or in, a, say, a car accident or something, would the daycare be responsible for the children at that point? No. In fact, both the school and the daycare are being paid to take care of those children. The parents are paying for the privilege. I'm sorry to tell you this, but if you think as a teacher or a daycare worker it's your responsibility to teach my children anything more than the necessities of life and that you're not beholden to me in that process, you are mistaken. I can take my kid and I can put him into another school, I can put him into another daycare, and you are gone from their life. Okay? When they leave school every day, they come home to me. If they don't come back to school tomorrow, whether I'm teaching them at home, I send them to another school, or we find some other way to deal with their schooling or their daycare, you'll not have any more say in that process at all. If you think you're a person with authority, therefore, and therefore you have a responsibility, let me help you to understand, largely, that is not the case. And I just want for you to know that. And I'm not saying this, again, because I don't think stu uh, students or, or daycare uh, attendees should learn nothing from the daycare of the school. I'm not saying that. And I'm particularly not saying that for the school where, like I say, reading, writing, arithmetic, so forth, should all be things that the school, that the school should be teaching the child so that they're more adept and able to deal with the world, the society around them, right? I'm not trying to say that that's not the case. What I want for you to understand is this, and it is just as simple as it can be. That child was born of my wife, in all likelihood, and maybe not, but, but that's typically the case. And they are my responsibility, and they are her responsibility. They're not a school's responsibility. That's not how that works. Yet again, if the school disappear, I, disappeared, I'd have to find a new school. Literally have had that happen. If I move from one place to another, they wouldn't be in your school anymore. By the way, if you hear my son in the background, know that he's going to be a little bit noisy today. But through all of this and all of this, what I want you to understand is if I die, they're not going to say to the school, oh, there are the, these children are the wards of the school now. 
No, somebody else is going to be responsible for them and it won't be teachers and it won't be daycare workers. Okay, this is why this is one of many reasons that I ought to be the one who's responsible for instilling the appropriate uh, attitudes, perspectives, ideals, ideas, and so forth into the heads of my children. Again, can teachers have a part in that? Yes. Can daycare workers have a part in that? Absolutely. In the end, who should be saying what, what should be said or what's going on? That would be me. So, this is kind of what I wanted to get across today. I hope you understand really exactly what it is that I'm saying. This has been the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt, and today is Saturday, the 30th of April of 2022. Uh, that means the end of the Sabbath at sundown today at the sunset, whatever you want to say. Tomorrow will be Sunday, the 1st of May of 2022, the beginning of that Christian week, according to most Christian folk. Uh, so, uh, again, Sunday, the 1st of May. Uh, thank you for everyone who's been here on Rumble, on the podcast, on YouTube, on BitChute, on CloudHub, on my Facebook page, on Locals.com, that's Kirk's Religion and Politics.Locals.com, on Minds.com, M-I-N-D-S.com, and that would typically be the Kurtz Religion and Politics group there, on Parlor, on Gab, on Twitter, or wherever else you happen to be hearing or seeing me today. Subject for today has been Our Children, and tomorrow we're going to talk about the subject of hard work, hard work. That's what we're going to discuss tomorrow. And I have a very specific reason that I want to sort of press this issue because I think it's something that these days is maybe not explained to a lot of people the way it ought to be and maybe they're not bringing their kids into the world and, and training them up in the way that they maybe ought to think about doing at the, at the very least. I uh, hope you're having a good day today. Hope everything is going well for you, and hopefully we will see you again on Sunday's edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This podcast was created on Saturday the 30th of April of 2022. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's religion and politics. Thanks for watching today's edition of The Daily Summation from Kurt's religion and politics. Don't forget to come back tomorrow uh, to check out the next one. Remember, on various platforms, primarily Rumble, YouTube, BitChute, and CloudHub, and the audio podcast, you can subscribe to my content. For the audio podcast, you probably want to use Apple, Google, or Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. In order to find me on those platforms, you can go to the Kurtz Religion and Politics channels on Rumble, YouTube, BitChute, and CloudHub. You can also get to my content on Facebook by finding the Kurtz Religion and Politics page there, minds, M-I-N-D-S dot com, uh, you, where you will find me at the Kurtz Religion and Politics group. And KurtzReligionPolitics.locals.com as well. You can look there. I post my daily video on various social media sites. Really only about three, Parlor, Gab, and Twitter at present. I am at KP Schubert on each of them. You can find me under them and you can find the videos under me. Uh, you should be able to find my podcasts on Google and Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It's also on podcasts.kpschubert.com. That's podcasts with an S dot k-p-s-h-u-b-e-r-t dot com uh, if, if you're looking for me on various of the podcast sites you probably want to search Kurt's Religion and Politics not the Daily Summation keep in mind you can subscribe to my content various on various places that I put it uh, all constructive feedback is welcome you can like, dislike, add a rumble or give whatever feedback is available on any of the platforms that you can do such things you can add, also add a comment on what I put there. Unless you're advertising or doing something that I believe will harm others, I'll leave your comments out there even if I don't agree with or understand them. I will try to let you know I've seen them when possible and may reply if I feel it's reasonable, appropriate, and possible, of course. Thanks again for viewing this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurtz Politics. Don't forget to come back again for tomorrow's episode.